When you go to a classic car auction featuring vehicles with reserved bids running as high as $100,000, it's difficult to identify the seller. Quite often, the vehicle belongs to a dealer, or at the very least, a professional car broker who really has no emotional attachment. But every once in a while, if you're lucky, you'll stumble across a backyard mechanic preparing to say goodbye to his best friend. Uh, it's a little bit nervous, all right, but, uh, but I, think it'll, I think I'll sell it. I think the car's right for the show. It's not hard to hear the emotion in Doug Pluis's voice as he waits his turn with his 1930 DeSoto. Well, I've had it 15 years, and uh, I actually took six months to restore it. I bought it in September, and I was driving it in April, and uh, it's gonna, we're going to miss it. I know my family at home are saying, well, if you bring it back, Dad, that's okay. How's it run? Perfect. At the last minute, Doug may have a nibble. A potential buyer wants to know just how far the car was driven to get to the show. From Collingwood, how far is that? Don't miss it. 116 kilometers. There's no heater in it. My fingers were numb. And finally, the moment of truth. Number 119 up next, ladies and gentlemen, from out of the past, a real antique 1930s solo. Four door sedan, and what a rare survivor this is. I can't say because I don't know what it's going to break. I really don't know, but I know it's uh, stirred up a lot of interest, a lot of interest in the uh, show today. But I have no idea how much it'll bring. But we'll take every dollar we can get out of it anyway. Now this is where it starts to get fun. Because the organizers of the auction get a cut from the final selling price, they're obviously anxious to get a sale. Thanks. Look at all the parts that go with it. Doug, you got 14 on your sheet for reserve. If it stops at like 11 or 12, should we check with you or just no sale it? Well, I don't want to sell for less than 12, but I'd, it should go for even more. From what I've heard, no problem with it. So, like, is 11 a no sale? No sale. Okay. 11 no. The bidding seems to have bottomed out. Time for the screws to be tightened just a little more. I got 11,250 bid. Oh. You got to get it to what, 12? Can we lift the reserve at 12? Yeah. And what do you got at net in your pocket? You're talking like, you got, I got about 14 into it. If I net you 11, can I lift the reserve right now? If I net you 11, if it doesn't go any further. Oh, I got to get more than 11. I got I to gotta get more than 11. I got to get 12 anyways. No, but in your pocket I'm talking after going. Yeah. 11? Yeah. 11 net to you? Yeah. When I lift the reserve, usually it's a lot of bidders jump in, but we'll see what happens. If it doesn't go any further from here, I'm going to net you 11, okay? okay? And the strategy appears to be working. Suddenly, there's a flurry of activity. What is it now? 12 1. And that's it. With a drop of the gavel and a stroke of the pen, Doug has sold his pride and joy. But it wasn't easy. Right behind that great DeSoto. Congratulations. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Here we have a Mercedes, a 300 SL Roadster 1990 with full power and condition as ever. I got uh, 12,200, and that's uh, a good deal for him and for me. I'm happy, and I hope he is. He's getting a good car. I know it's going to be a mess, but uh, it had to happen. <laughs> having it for a long time like this, and I'll go to my garage tomorrow, and I'll look in there, and it won't be there. <laughs> and as Doug looks for a ride back home, another car has already rolled onto the carpet. The process is about to be played out once again. For a Florida car, Russ Free 